Thanks very much for being here and thanks uh, to the organizers for uh, inviting us. So I'm uh, Anastasios Nanos. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, our work on unikernels, uh, how we integrated them into Kubernetes and um, how we um, uh, actually applied unikernels in a use case like uh, uh, Knative and, uh, and serverless. Um, a bit of information about uh, us. So we're a young uh, company, um, a young SME. We're doing research. Um, we're involved in, the, in research and commercial projects. And uh, we focus mainly on system software, on the low level parts of the, of the stack. Uh, this is the team involved in the specific project. So it's, uh, it's Babis, myself, Yorgos and Yanis, all Greeks. Um, so let's let's first go through uh, the, the the broader topic of the of the presentation. So we we were we, we were interested in, um, um, in in serverless platforms where users write a function in a high level language. They pick the event to trigger this function, and the underlying framework handles everything else: the uh, instance selection, deployment, scaling, uh, monitoring, logging, all 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 this stuff. Um, now, there's a, there's a group in, uh, at HA Zurich where they, they, they are doing work on, on systems in general um, and they, they focused on, on serverless platforms and the requirements of these platforms. So they, they are building the, their own uh, system. So they, they, they identified that there are issues regarding um, execution latency uh, throughput, um, energy efficiency regarding the, the execution of the function on the, on the hardware, and um, uh, security and isolation of these functions. Um, in, in this talk, we focus on the first and the last one, so low latency, uh, um, really uh, low um, the re response times of the, uh, of the, of the function, and um, on uh, isolating the actual function from the rest of the of the of the platform. Uh, so these these guys have concerns about the system software stack. So they they mentioned that um, the, it re re retrofits legacy infrastructure and presents high overhead when managing short-lived tasks. So, um, however. Uh, Kubernetes is still the dominant orchestration framework, and Knative is a <laughs> Kubernetes native serverless framework. So our our take was, it's it's not a random project, it's it's actually something uh, deployed and used by many many people. So we we focus on trying to optimize the parts of the stack that we care about, and and see what's going on there. Uh, let's, let's have a look at the, at the architecture of Knative. So Knative has a couple of components, the activator, the autoscaler, and the function pods. These components are being triggered by uh, external requests, and the, the activator um, talks to the, to the autoscaler, the activator uh, launches uh, function pods, and these fu function pods do the actual work. Um, we, we examine um, uh, isolation issues in, uh, in this setup, and we do that using um, sandboxing mechanisms, and we examine the response latency, um, affect, uh, how, how the response latency is affected by these isolation, uh, by, the, by the sandboxing uh, the functions. Um, we, we look into, into Kata containers, so we are, we are involved in um, uh, in, the, in the community, and uh, it's actually one of, on, one of the most mature frameworks to sandbox uh, containers into VMs. So uh, the, the Kata containers uh, runtime is uh, CRI compatible, that means you can spawn uh, Kubernetes pods. Uh, essentially, the way it works is that it spawns um, a, a micro VM in, um, in AWS Firecracker, in Camel, Cloud Hypervisor, their own custom hypervisor, Dragon Ball, and they, they spawn all the containers in a pod in this micro VM. 
Um, essentially, the other, other sandboxing mechanisms like Gvisor use the same principle. If we, if we apply uh, this sandbox container runtime into Knative, we, we do that using the runtime class option. So we, we end up with a figure like this. So the Knative function pod is inside a, a, a micro VM. So the rest of the stack is protected from the user submitted code. However, there is this sidecar container, the QProxy container in Knative, that is still in the same pod, in the same namespace, in the same security sandbox, let's say, um, as the user sub submitted code. Additionally, uh, using these kind of uh, runtimes increases the cold boot time because you, you have to spawn the micro VM, you have to pass through the container root FS and spawn this um, container, essentially. And, and we, we ask ourselves, what, what if we had a way to isolate the user container from the rest of the stack, even from the QProxy container, and at the same time reduce cold boot times? And, of course, <laughs> our, our mind goes to unikernels. Um, a bit of information about unikernels. Uh, a unikernel is a specialized single address space machine image. It's built using a library operating system. And essentially, it's tailored for a single application. There is no kernel and user space separation. So we don't have mode switches. This is important for I.O. and for booting. And it, um, essentially, it contains the absolute minimum software components for the application to run. However, unikernels are, are seen as a researchy approach. Uh, there's this famous quote here that unikernels are unfit for production. However, lately, there's, there's, there has been considerable work to make them more mature. We've got wider library support, and we've got many, many tools uh, to facilitate adoption, actually. There are many frameworks out there, and they, each, each framework is tailored to a specific use case. The issues that we have with unikernels in, in the cloud native ecosystem is that they are not containers, so we cannot use all the, all the container tooling that exists and we like. And they are not typical VMs, so we cannot reuse all the, all the sandbox container runtimes that exist and we can um, uh, use with Kubernetes. So we we think, and not, not only us, and many people uh, years ago, um, we, we, we saw that Unikernet should look like OCI images, because OCI is um, used extensively in the, in the cloud native ecosystem, and container runtimes should know how to parse these OCI images and boot the Unikernet instead of a, of, um, of a container. And we, we thought, let's build a unikernel compatible container runtime. How, how hard could it be? Um, we, so, so we built Uran C. It's CRI compatible, it's written in Go, no surprises there. It treats unikernels as processes, so essentially the container runtime manages the application, not the actual system that the application runs on. Um, unikernel images are OCI artifacts. And we have this modular approach where you can plug in hypervisors, you can plug in unikernel frameworks and end up with a, a generic runtime, let's say. To, 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 to build the unikernel into an OCI image, we used a um, uh, debug tool, essentially. We call it Bima. We use a container file-like syntax. So essentially, it's like um, a Docker file. We copy the, you, you can see in the figure the, the format. We copy the binary. We copy any, any other extra files needed, like a configuration or extra libraries, whatever. And we annotate this container image using labels um, to facilitate the, the execution from the container runtime. We build it the, using the same way as, as Docker. And of course, because this is a, an OCI image, you can use any, any tools available 
uh, for um, for these images like Scopeo, Yumosi, Dive, or you can you can push them to Harbor to Docker Hub. Um, a, a tricky part about the integration with Kubernetes is that um, there are sidecar containers. There, there's the, the, the post container or any, any other sidecar container, like in Knative that we will see later. What we, what we did is that we, we check the annotations on the OCI image and we say, is this a unique kernel image? Then you, we use URMC, the standard code flow. Is this, if it's not a unique kernel image, then we, we call run C with the rest of the, of the software flow, of the, of the code flow. So essentially we've got this separation even on the same pod. If we, if we, if we apply this logic into the k-native function pod, then we get, um, we, we build the user function as a, as a unique kernel image. We package it using Vima, so we've got an OCI image. And if we create a k-native service uh, with URNC's runtime class, we get the user container in a unique kernel, so it's sandboxed. But the QProxy container, which is not a unique kernel image, is a, is a simple container. So it's booted using RunC. So the, there is actual hardware virtualization separation between the user container and the, the user submitted code and the rest of the platform stack. So, so we get security from uh, isolation from the user submitted code and faster spawn times because we don't, we don't put the whole thing in a micro VM. We have an agent, the agent talks to the runtime and blah, 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 whatever happens with the, with the sandbox containers. It's just a unique error. So to, to prove our hypothesis that this is faster from sandbox container runtimes, we, we got a server, uh, we set it up with K-native, we tweaked um, KPerf um, to make sure that we, we measure what we, what we want to measure. And we use a simple um, HTTP reply function. We used Go for the generic um, containers, the example from K-native, and we used C for Unicanals. It was a bit easier. So the, what we expect to see is we, we do a curl on the on the host name and what we expect to see is the headers of, uh, of the request plus the headers of the response. Um, to, to dig into what we measure exactly, we, we build a um, sequence diagram. So we've got uh, KPerf, which issues the request, goes through the ingress controller, goes through the activator, it creates a deployment, um, the, the deployment essentially creates the k-native function pod. We've got the user container and the qproxy container, and essentially the request goes into the uh, qproxy container, the qproxy container forwards the request to the user container, and we've got the way back, the response. So we measure the whole thing. We don't measure just the call to time. Uh, the, uh, we, we, we call that service re response latency. The numbers we took um, show that we get on the on the x-axis we've got all the all the container runtimes that we that we measured on the y-axis we've got the service response latency what Kperf said. Um, we can see that um, the sandbox container runtimes are almost two times slower. Uh, so the, the x-axis is in um, is in seconds so lower is better. So all, all the sandbox container runtimes are twice as slow, um, and the generic runtime run C and U run C are almost identical. And this is the median value. If we if we show the 99th uh, the, the the percentile the slowest response again, all the sandbox container runtimes are twice as slow. Um, uh, the generic and U run C are almost identical. And we do that um, for, for many instances. So we, we, this is where we tweaked KPerf so that we can have uh, a one-to-one -one response uh, from, the, we, 
we issue a request and we expect it to be served by um, a specific function. And we need to measure that. So we, we spawned 300 um, instances, 300 functions, and we measured the behavior of the, of the various runtimes. And what we saw is that, again, uh, the sandbox container runtimes um, up to 125 are almost two times slower. Um, then it goes, it goes up because we, we saturate the cores, essentially. And um, the generic and uran C are almost identical. They, they scale the same way. And what we take from these, from these early measurements is that we, we are able to isolate the user code using hardware virtualization mechanisms and have the same um, response latency, the same um, execution experience, let's say, for, for the user as a generic runtime where there's minimal isolation and there are security concerns. Because the, the K-native threat model says that you cannot spawn untrusted code. You have, you have to have a dedicated cluster to be able to run user code. Now, uh, perfect, we have time. So, um, uh, I'm going to show you a demo where we, we have a build workflow, how we, how we build the unikernel, how we build the image, the OCI image for the unikernel, and we, how we push it to a, to a registry. And then we're going to boot these unikernels and show uh, the, um, the memory consumption um, on, on, a, on an edge node, on, a Jetson, on an NVIDIA Jetson Orin, um, where we, when we spawn te tens of functions on, on these um, devices, how the, how the memory consumption changes. Um, let me see if I can do that. Presumably, I can do that live. I also have a video, but... Um, perfect. Let me just clear this stuff. So, um, yeah, so there is this tool in, uh, in the Jetson in the, in the Jetson software system where it's equivalent to HTOP or to TOP, but they, they call it JTOP because it has more information about the GPU and stuff. We don't care about that, we just use, we just care about the memory consumption. And let me just go here. So we've got JTOP and we're here. Let's, let's have a look at the services. So we have deployed a simple K-native service. We've got, we call it Hello Container. Um, this is the, the image that I didn't show how it's being made. So I triggered this just before my, my, my talk. So this is This is essentially a, a GitHub workflow where there are steps with, that we build the unikernel, steps, uh, another step that creates the image, that signs it and pushes it to, to a container registry. So there's this HTTP reply example. This is the step where we build the unikernel. It's a Unicraft unikernel. So what we do essentially is we, we clone the repos, we use the default config. This is the camo thing. Same thing is for, uh, for Firecracker. And we get, we get the artifact, the unikernel image, essentially. The, the next step is to actually prepare the image. So we've got the container file just as I, I showed earlier in the in the slide. So we've got the unikernel binary. We copy it. We annotate the image. We 
enter information about what kind of unikernel it is and what kind of hypervisor we, we want to use. We sign it. We create a man. We do that for um, uh, ARMv8 and for x86, and we create a manifest so that, that we can glue the two uh, images together. So, the, and, and, and the same and the same thing happens uh, for the generic application, which is a, a Docker file for the Go for the HTTP reply Go application. So, in a, in a generic container uh, for the Knative service, we um, create this service, we call it hello container. This is the container image, the one that's being pushed from the GitHub uh, action. And we also created a domain mapping so that it's easier to, uh, to talk to it. And we have deployed this service. And let's watch the pods. Everything is empty. My, I'm not sure if you can see the, ah, Maybe you can see it. the memory consumption. And we use this tool, Hey, that so Hey is probably you already know about that. Uh, we we issue 20 concurrent requests, and we do that for 15 seconds. So, if we do that, we should be able to see containers being created. So these are this is the cold, the cold boot time, and we should be able to see memory consumption. Um, now, one, one of the issues here is that, uh, and this is one of the reasons that we tweaked KPerf, is that it didn't spawn 20 containers, it didn't spawn 20 functions, because the first function served the first request and then started to serve the other request. So it's not, it's not a one-to-one -one mapping with the graphs that, we, that, I, that I showed earlier. But you can get the point. I mean, the, the memory consumption increased uh, a little bit because it's a, um, it's a generic container. Uh, if we try to do that using, let me just go there. So this is the generic container. Let's go to, uh, should be this one. Let's go to the, to the cut file cracker case. So we've got hello FC is the service, the runtime class is cut FC, the container image is the same, and the, and the domain name is hello FC. Let's just wait for it to terminate to see the, the memory consumption as before. I think we're good, 2.8. So if we, if we do that, what happens or what should happen, a bit of latency, um, what happens is that it spawns micro VMs, the sandbox container, spawns the hello container, the um, HTTP reply go, and you can see that the memory consumption is increasing. And it's it's a lot different than, than before. So it's 5.4, 5.5, still increasing. And so what, what we get from this example is that if we want to be isolated, if we want to isolate the user code, we'll have to spend more memory. We, we have to, we have to um, um, let's say, uh, get the, the overhead of the micro VM, of the sandboxing, of the, of the user code. And if we wait a bit for it to terminate, and we do the same with, um, you can see. Just okay. Should be ready in a couple of seconds.
Yeah, we've got 2.8. So if we, if we do that with uh, Huron C and Firecracker again, we can see it's not as low as the container, but it's a lot lower than the sandbox container. And we get better latency than before. We get the, the first response latency. We get isolated um, environment. Um, so it's, it's, it's something that it's worth investigating at least. Um, let me go back to the presentation. Um, so all of this wouldn't have been possible without uh, the funding that we get uh, to do this kind of research is through uh, EU projects. And to conclude, we, we can see that containers are really great. We, we like it. Um, we, we, we like them. The, or, or, all orchestration platforms depend on, on containers. However, they they present loose um, uh, security and isolation. Uh, uh, they, they have loose security and, and isolation issues. So by sandboxing them, by, by sandboxing these containers, we get the isolation that we want, but we also get overhead. So if, if we can use unikernels for this specific use case, for, for the serverless use case, if we can use unikernels to re reduce the attack surface and to improve spawn times, that might as well be, be um, okay. So uh, in order to be able to do that, we have to make Unikernels cloud native. So this, this, we, we think that this is a, um, a first step to uh, get cloud native Unikernels. Um, all of our code is, um, uh, is open source. So you can see here from the links, uh, you can go and play with Uran C, with Bima, the, the tool that we built the OCI image. Uh, we also have the, the workflow for building um, the Unicraft image and the, um, and the generic application and push it to our registry. Uh, so you, you can play with that. Uh, we also have a blog post about these numbers and how details on how we took them, what configuration uh, we used for K-Native. And that's it. Thanks very much for your attention. <laughs> I'll be happy to take any questions online or offline. I guess everything was clear or not? Or everything was unclear? I cannot see. Hey, thank you for uh, sharing what you have done here. There's certainly some interesting work and fills the gaps in some that I've noticed uh, trying to mush together unikernels and also Kubernetes and container workflows. Uh, is this generic across any unikernel? Is there adaption work that needs to be done to make this work? Like, what does that workflow look like? Uh, I, I'm sorry, could, could you repeat? I, if this, is, is it generic? I, I lost the other part. Uh, what work needs to be done to make a unikernel able to be used here? Is it generic enough that you can just throw a unikernel that's x86 compatible? Or does adaption work need to be done to make it run using you run C? No, 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 it's, uh, uh, you just have to, you, you, you just have to uh, create the, the necessary hooks, let's say, so that you can boot the unikernel with you run C. It's essentially, it creates the command line interface that the hypervisor um, uses to spawn it. So, if I, if I understand the, the question correctly. So, for instance, Unicraft, you, you have a specific command line or specific configuration file for Firecracker, let's say, to, to boot it. So, what we do with Wiran C is that we create the, the hook to, um, to, to create this config file, let's say, or create the command line for Kemu. Uh, so that it can, it, it, so that it can boot. 
If, uh, is this what you're asking? Or? Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Hello, I've got a question for you. Um, one of the massive benefits of unikernels is spin-up time. You showed like how like fast they were responding, but not how fast they started up, which is one reason I asked that is you can almost get to per request unikernels. So you fire up a per request that comes in a unikernel. I'm just curious if you've done any research in that space. Uh, unfortunately, not yet, but we we are in the in the process of doing that. Okay, great. So we, we 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 wanted to do that. So in in this in this figure in this sequence diagram, we want to break the time down. But in order to do that, we need to annotate the other container runtimes. We have done that for Uran C, but we need to, to do the same for Kata, for Gvisor, and for Uran C. And we didn't have the time yet to do that. It's it's work in progress. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, I'm just testing my understanding here. Am I right in thinking that if the user has a pre-built uh, OCI image? that you can't just run that image using the unikernel, you have to run Beaver to statically link the user's code first before. So yes, you have to, you have to glue, you, you have to, actually you have, you have to glue the OCI image with the container runtime. So if the same stance, if you, you could just exec, so you could build an OCI image with an annotation that says, don't do any virtualization. Don't. You, this is not a unikernel. This is an application, and that's what we did for for debugging. And you can uh, you can tell the container runtime that this is an application. It's not a unikernel. So you just exec the thing. So it's 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 modular enough. It's uh, naive. It's like a, a generic container runtime. The the complicated part of Uran C was the. The, um, all these ping pongs and, and back and forth you do to re-exec, to fork and communicate with the original uh, original uh, process and the and the forked process using the, the the IPC mechanisms, which is a bit of a of a mess. But yeah. Okay, I think we're done. If, thanks very much. Thank you.